Hi there, it's Jennifer, and today I have a video for you for the Hero Arts Stamp Your Story blog hop. This is just in celebration of their newest release of stamps. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a quick watercolor background. Watercolor backgrounds like this are really popular in card making and scrapbooking right now, and I have a trick to show you how to do it really quick and easy and get a nice soft blended look. First, I'm going to arrange all of these stamps in the background, these word stamps, for a nice resist. So this is a new stamp set from Hero Arts, part of their Stamp Your Story line. It's called My Words, and I just love it because there's a bunch of words that you can build together to create your own sentiments or, or messages for a scrapbook page. And I'm going to take these and just arrange them on my craft sheet and just put them with the, uh, the stamp side face down so that I can arrange them here and then transfer them onto my acrylic block. I like the font on this stamp set because it's open. So you could use it for coloring in each letter in a different color. Lots you can do with it. But I'm just going to arrange these right here on my craft sheet. You can do it on a piece of cardstock if you wanted to. Just to make sure I got the placement. It's much easier to do this than try to arrange them all on the block them itself. So I've got like this cluster of words in the background that I'm working towards. Once I've got those arranged like this, I'm going to go ahead and take an acrylic mount. Sorry, my head got in the way there and press the acrylic block right onto this, transferring all the images onto the block. One of them gets away here, so I'll just stick it back in place. Now the block that I'm using here is a stamp press from Martha Stewart. I just like it because it's got these foam feet that help kind of control where you're stamping, but you can use a regular acrylic block for this. If you don't have one big enough, you could even use a plate as a block for creating large backgrounds like this. So I'm going to ink this up with Versamark ink, and I'm going to stamp this onto some watercolor paper. For this technique, I highly recommend using watercolor paper. It just takes water much better than regular cardstock does. So after I've stamped this, I'm going to add some white embossing powder and heat set it. And this will create an embossed image that will resist the watercolor that we put on top. So now I'm just going to zap this with the heat gun. And again, I highly recommend using watercolor paper here. Now for this technique, I'm using Distress Inks as my um, watercolor of choice. However, you can use any kind of watercolor for this, anything. This trick works with all of them. The key is to take a water bottle and mist the paper first to get it wet. You could flick it on, add it with a brush if you wanted to. I just like to mist it and kind of rub it in with your fingers if you want to, but you'll see here in the light that I get it pretty good and wet. That is the key to getting a good blended background. I'll show you a little bit more in a second. I'm going to take my broad uh, watercolor brush from Ranger and I'm going to take some distress inks and press it onto my craft sheet. You could press it onto it, any kind of plastic so acrylic mount would work too. Add a little bit of water, pick this up, mix it up with your brush and add this onto the wet watercolor paper. Now you'll see because the paper's already wet it blends in and see how it kind of softens on the edges and it doesn't take any effort at all. Now once I've got it, all the color I want on here, it's pretty wet. I'm going to take my brush, clean it off a little bit. And now I'll move on to an orange color a spiced marmalade. Now I'm using Distress Inks as watercolor because when they come in contact with water, they blend and kind of move and do fun things and kind of act like watercolor. But again, you could use watercolor pencils, watercolor pens, any kind of watercolor you want. If you wet the paper first, you'll get great blending. Now you'll notice when I apply each color, I let it overlap with the color I've already put down. And that water on the paper will automatically bl blend them together. It takes no effort at all. And the water color, or the water that we put down also kind of makes the ink feather and soften on the edges. So you don't have to worry about getting perfect edges every time or streaks or anything. This will just blend perfectly. In between each color, I'm actually letting, um, or cleaning my brush a little bit, but you don't even have to do that. That would actually help with the blending if you don't clean it much so that each color kind of blends into the next. I used a few different shades of Distress Ink here. The green is the mowed lawn and this teal color is the peacock feathers. I absolutely love that color. So here we have a nice watercolor background. We just let that dryer zap with the heat gun and you'll be good to go. However, I wanted it to be a little more vibrant and I wanted to show you how you can have a more vibrant look. I decided to just go right on top of what I've created, but also show you what I can, you can do a little bit different to make it more vibrant. I'm misting it again just so that it's nice and wet. I'm going to take my Distress Ink and put it onto my craft sheet and not add any water to it. And you can see how the color becomes more bold because we're not watering it down much. So if you're using any kind of watercolor pencil or pen, you could pick it right up from the tip of the marker, or scribble it onto a craft sheet here, or put it right onto the paper, but make sure that paper is wet first. 
and that allows you to get some really good blending. So there I went ahead and just added some more and I got a more intense background. And I missed it when I'm done, which helps blend it even more. So there you have it. The tip for creating a blended watercolor background is to use water first. Now to finish this card off, I die cut some hearts from some glitter paper and added that to the card. And also white heat embossed a greeting onto the little teal strip there. I also added some glitter paper strips above and below it just to kind of give it a nice finished look. So I hope this inspires you to try a watercolor background. Uh, remember, you can use any kind of watercolor for this. I just love to use distress inks. If you have any questions, please head over to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com. Be sure to check out all the Stamp Your Story stamps at heroarts.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.